Okay, now we're going to try and come up with an expression about how pressure changes as a wave passes. So in order to do that, we're going to consider a small volume of air here in the tube that we described before. So we're going to assume that this tube has some cross-sectional area given by capital A. So capital A is now standing for a cross-sectional area, not an amplitude. Okay, so initially, before there's any wave, we're considering a volume of air here, and the volume is given by the cross-sectional area times the length of the tube. And then we put our pulse through the air here, and that causes this air to move. But it doesn't all move an equal amount. The amount it moves depends on its distance from this end here. So the, the piece of air which was here moves some distance, S1 here, whereas the piece of air at this other end moves some different distance, S2, to that point there because it initially had a different X and so it's going to move a different amount. And so the change in volume in this case is equal to this cross-sectional area times the difference between these two S's. So this will be S1 minus S2. And if those ends both move the same amount, then this would be zero. But it's not because there's a pulse going through and so it depends on the distance from this end here. Okay, now to simplify this, we need to use a definition, which probably you, those of you doing engineering will come across a fair amount. We're going to be looking at the bulk modulus, which is given the symbol B, and that is defined as the volume stress over the volume strain. Now the volume stress is equal to the change in force over the cross-sectional area. And as we've seen before, a force divided by an area is a pressure. So that's equal to the change in pressure. And the volume strain is equal to the change in volume divided by the initial volume. So we just leave that there. And we've got a minus sign here as well. So what we're trying to work out is well how much the pressure changes. So now rearranging this equation, we've got that our change in pressure is equal to the negative of the bulk modulus divided by the change in volume divided by the initial volume. Okay, now we're just going to substitute in. Delta P is equal to minus B, and we said it was delta V on VI. Delta V is A delta S and V is A delta X. So now the A's will cancel out and taking the partial derivative, so replacing this capital delta with a little delta to indicate that we're taking just a very small increment, we can write this as minus B dS dX. And then substituting in, we said S was equal to S max cos KX minus omega T. They're moving with simple harmonic motion about their equilibrium positions. So then taking the derivative of this, our negatives cancel out because we get negative sine kx minus omega t, and this k has to be put out the front as well. So this gives us an expression for the pressure change in terms of, how, of the equilibrium displacement. Okay, so let's have a look at how pressure and displacement are related. We can consider the maximum values. So we've said that the change in the pressure is equal to B K S max sine Kx minus omega t. Now the maximum value for this is going to be when this is equal to 1. So the maximum pressure differential will be B K S max. Okay. Now the bulk modulus isn't an especially useful thing to work with, so let's try and change this around a bit. We've said that the velocity is equal to the square root of B, the bulk modulus over the density, which tells us that the bulk modulus is equal to the velocity squared times the density. So we can replace this term with that. K is equal to 2 pi over lambda. Lambda is equal to the velocity over the frequency. So we can write this as omega over V. So let's make these replacements. We've got V squared rho times omega over V times S max. These Vs cancel and we end up with V rho omega S max is equal to the maximum pressure differential. 
The reason for doing this is just that the density, the velocity and the angular frequency of the sound wave are easier to measure than the bulk modulus. Okay, so let's consider the intensity of periodic sound waves. So we've said previously that waves carry energy and sound waves are a type of wave so they carry energy as well. So let's imagine a piston moving backwards and forwards and creating sound waves. As it does that, as it moves backwards and forwards, it's doing work on the gas. And work is given by f dot dx. So work is a form of energy. So the rate of work done gives us the power. So the, that gives us the rate at which we're putting energy in. So power is equal to f, and now is the x which is changing with time. So we have vx, that's the derivative of x with time. Okay, now you don't need to be able to reproduce this derivation, but just so that you've seen it. Power is equal to f dot vx, that's what we just said. Now the force applied, the resultant force was equal to the chain pressure differential times the area, and then we have to take the derivative of the equilibrium displacement to get the velocity of the increment that we're considering. So we've said that delta p is equal to p v omega a s max sine kx minus omega t, so we're just substituting in for that. And we're just substituting in for this S as well. We've got S max cos Kx minus omega t. Now all we need to do is take the derivative of this. When we do that, we get omega S max sine Kx minus omega t. And so then multiplying these two together, we end up with rho v omega squared a S max squared sine squared Kx minus omega t. So this gives us the power which is transferred at any point in space and time. Now what we're really more interested in is the average power which is transferred. So what we're going to do is we're going to work out the average value of this thing over one period. If we then divide that by one period here, divide it by the time it takes for one period, that will give us the average amount of power. So all we do now is we integrate this term here because it's the only one with a t dependence over one period. It's just a standard integral and it actually turns out that this is equal to a half. So we can replace this with a half. 